Hello again, everyone. Uh, what we have is a follow-up video from the video I made about why the narcissist feels uh, fears death. Um, person liked it so much, you wanted to give me some follow-up and get uh, get my opinion uh, on on what else he has to say. So here we go. <clears throat> you are right about my parents not being good caregivers. My father has been divorced three times and has seven children from his marriages. His first son, who was around 55, died last year after being homeless up in Seattle, Washington. He died of a heroin overdose. He was a bad father and abandoned his children. His first daughter got busted stealing and selling pills when she worked at CVS Pharmacy. She's currently on house arrest. Her daughter had her first child when she was around 14. His second daughter was homeless and she moved and moved in with her son. She got my dad to co-sign a car with her and then stop paying the bill. My father has my father had to secretly repossess the car after he tracked her down. Her second son is doing okay. He has a job but hates the rest of the family, especially the golden child of his third wife. He tried to have her arrested one time for growing marijuana. They are now enemies. So it sounds like the second son already figured out the narcissism uh, dynamic, whether or not he put his finger on that's what it is, but he already figured to, to cut out the family. My golden child's sister got pregnant when she was about 16 and had a miscarriage. She's the one who was given a car and crashed it while DUI. She didn't get in any trouble and was given a brand new car with the insurance money. Golden children are never really held responsible for anything they do. My other sister is the one who had the child and couldn't take care of it. My mother adopted that child and said it had to be her son and not her grandson. She forces him to call her mother even though he knows she's his grandmother. That's sick again. My biological brother and I were both adopted into the family. My brother is the one who got on crack. He already has four kids, two with one woman who he broke up with. Mostly he lives on welfare and is married. I first smoked marijuana in sixth grade. I stopped until around 10th grade. I did join the military and go to college, but I didn't finish my bachelor's degree because I had a disease that made it hard for me to talk. So I cut my losses and got a job as a security guard. I currently work for my local government center in security. I've gotten better from the disease and I'm trying to better. I'm trying to have a better lot in life. I thought you might be interested in what happened to me in the military, how I was abused by narcissists in the military. During my last semester in high school, I was ditching a lot and smoking marijuana with my friends. I failed my last semester of English class. When I called my narcissist mother, she yelled at me and said, you will never be anything in life now. I tried to explain to her that all I had to do was take an English class in adult education and I would get my high school diploma. She acted like I was going to be a high school dropout for the rest of my life. Well, of course, and like I'm sure a parent never wants to see you fail in English class, especially so close to graduation. But again, a normal parent would be like, all right, let's figure out how to get you your diploma, all right? But that's not what the narcissist does. The narcissist looks for any reason to berate you. And this is a point in life where you need a parent. Okay, nobody expects kids and teenagers to be perfect. Everybody, they screw up. Okay, how a parent reacts to that screw up is very telling. The narcissist is going to wait for the screw up. They like the screw up. The bigger the screw up, the more they can hold it against you, the more they can berate you. Whereas people coming from a normal loving family, the family then will circle around the child and say, all right, what do we need to do to fix this? Let's move this forward, so on and so forth. That's not, that's not what the narcissist does at all. That's not what, because that's how normal parents react, not the narcissist. I, I thought I would join the army to straighten myself up since my narcissistic parents made me feel so bad about myself. I was sort of suicidal. I hoped I would die in war on some far-flung part of the earth and be remembered as someone who was valuable. And, you know, that's 
that's very, very sad. Because I think a lot of us have these scenarios where we want to get away, but you know, you have these suicidal tendencies and don't necessarily want to keep going forward. Okay, and because we feel so bad about ourselves, you know, we're, we're you know, you're hoping you get you're gonna get killed over there, so you can go out on a positive. So you can go out on because you're because you're probably so so afraid if you do die, knowing that your parents are just going to badmouth you and badmouth your memory and shit talk you. So you know, I think what you were, you were doing is you were looking to go out as a hero, go out on go out on a on a positive note, so that's the last thing society or these people can remember about you. But you, let's say that did happen to you. Do you really think it would have changed anything about how your parents talk about you or, or, or what they say or your relationships with other people? I mean, from what you're telling me about your family history, your parents have destroyed everything they have laid their hands on. Every person, everybody in their care, they have destroyed them one way or another. So you dying over in Kosovo or or wherever you were going at that point, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't have made one bit of difference to them. They'd have used it for sympathy. Oh, my son was killed as a hero. But once once that supply passed of your death, it went right back to what a piece of shit you were, and then and now you're dead. So... So it's a good thing that it didn't happen. When I got deployed to Kosovo, I went on what the military calls rest and recreation in Sofia, Bulgaria for three days. On the second day, I asked a cab driver to get, get me some marijuana. The cab driver ripped me off and gave me some hemp. It had no THC. When I got back to my room with a guy from my platoon, we decided to smoke the hemp. A few minutes later, someone knocked on the door. The guy I was with opened the door without giving me time to get rid of the hemp. Military police walked into the room with a canine and found the hemp. We both got arrested. And this is the entire problem with the damn drug war. You know, you're on rest and relaxation. Granted, it's illegal. But even in Bulgaria, they're coming in with canines looking for weed. Coming out of a war zone when you're on. I mean, it is just so absurd. It is just so absurd. Now, like I said, I don't agree with you starting in sixth grade and in high school because your brain's not developed. That's the wrong move. But if you're in the military in a place like Kosovo when it was under when when it was wartime there, <laughs> you know, it and this is what the military police are worried about. This is what the military is worried about. When I got back to my base, I did a drug test and passed it. The guy I was with lied to my platoon leaders about me. He said I was the one who bought the marijuana and how he was innocent. The platoon leaders tried to pin the entire thing on me. They told me to wait until we got back to America before talking to a lawyer. That way they could use their cronies in America to pin the entire thing on me. I pretended to go along with them. I told them I wouldn't speak to a lawyer until we got back to America. One day when I was alone, I sneaked away and talked to a JAG lawyer. I admitted I bought marijuana and wanted to plead guilty. They gave me a non-judicial punishment called an Article 15. They punished the guy I was with, too, by taking away his rank in a month pay. In a month pay. Whenever somebody tells you in some kind of position of governmental authority, don't talk to a lawyer, that's when you demand a lawyer on the spot. Because they, you're right, they were up to something. They were up to something. Our system of justice, whether you're in the military or private, you are entitled to a lawyer. And they're allowed to lie to you. And anything you say can and will be used against you. Period. Period. They'll act like you're your friends. They act like they're trying to make it go. They're not. Anybody who tells you not to talk to a lawyer is lying to you and manipulating you. My platoon leaders got really upset with with me. I defeated their plan to pin the whole thing on me. Now I was afraid of them. I didn't want to get murdered by friendly fire. When I got back to America, I had to figure out a way to get out of the military before my platoon members could get me into, the, into training out in the woods all alone and beat the crap out of me, which does happen. Absolutely does happen in the military. Because if you break that chain of command, even though you're in the right and you're protecting yourself, Okay, now it now now you're invited. Now you gotta have the shit kicked out of here or, or 
or God forbid worse. I decided to tell my commander I was gay. Wow. My platoon leaders weren't allowing me to speak to my commander. One day I sneaked away and walked into the commander's office and told him I was gay. I bought some gay porn magazines and left them in my room. I told a friend back home I needed to let my commander know we were in a relationship. I gave my friend's phone number to my commander. I was immediately kicked out of the army for being gay. Wow. That's kind of crazy. That's crazy. It's crazy that you were that afraid that you, that you did that, but it's crazy that they would just throw it like now that it's gays in the military. Like you tried that now, forget about it. But I mean, that's neither here nor there. It's just very shocking now. When I went to do my last physical, I was sexually assaulted by the doctor. As I was sitting on the, on the table, the doctor took an un, unusual interest in my anal area. He was using his light and touching me. I was uncomfortable and thought it was just normal. Then the doctor opens my medical records and says, I see you're leaking semen from your penis. I need you to jerk it and squeeze it. I jerked my penis and squeezed it. Then the doctor said, I need you to do it a whole lot harder than that. If I have to do it, if I have to do it, then it's going to be a lot harder. You know, these government, I don't know if that was so much, well, it is like, to me, that would be a sexual assault, but I don't think the doctor was getting, it's a power thing. It's a power thing because they probably knew you were, you were getting over on them from the marijuana. So... You know, and that is a very narcissistic thing, you know, because, you know, there's got to be punishment. You got to do what we say. And that's what this guy was doing to you. The guy was trying to humiliate you and, and, and really mess with you. Why? Because he thinks he has the power to do it. And in the military, he pretty much does. The doctor was forcing me to jerk off in front of him. I was threatened by the doctor that if I didn't do if, that if I didn't do, I would, wouldn't be able to pass the medical exam and would be delayed leaving the military. I reported it to the Department of Veteran Affairs as military sexual trauma. It took me 15 years to report it. I didn't realize until recently that it's one of the reasons I can't take pride in my service. I guess you could say that was the icing on the cake of my narcissistic abuse in the military. Ironically, before I joined the military, when I told my, my mother I was going to join the army, she yelled, you, are you crazy? When I was out of the military, she said, you couldn't even make it in the army. They never miss an opportunity. So on the front end, she didn't want to see you get out of the situation and maybe better yourself. Okay, but because you had these issues with narcissism and already were going into the military with narcissistic PTSD, you know, and once again, you were abused in another, in another narcissistic system. This one controlled more of a government control since it's the military. She made sure to kick you on the way out, too. You can't win for losing. My father often badmouths my military service, too. My father was a Navy CB and served a year in Vietnam. He told me he wished I had joined the Navy or at least joined the Marines. I told him I don't like ships and his jaw dropped. My father told me when he was in Vietnam, his base was being guarded by army soldiers. The soldiers would all gangbang a prostitute who showed up. He said they all smoked marijuana too. I think he was, I think he just said that to be in my service in the army. Yeah, like he was saying, they're all just a bunch of potheads. You know, that could be general competition between the branches of the military. You know, they all, hate, like, they don't hate each other, but they have that competition thing. But again, any way to demean you since you were in the army, just he, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. I told him if he doesn't respect me, I should just move out of his house. Of course, not wanting to lose his narcissistic supply, he says, we're just talking after verbally abusing me. They always say that. What are you getting so? We're just talking. You know, blah, blah, blah. And then you're like, you're crazy. 
That's the gaslight. That's the narcissistic gaslight. You're blowing it out of proportion and you're crazy. He says he respects me but doesn't respect the army. I told him he doesn't respect my service and he claimed he did. Tip, typical mixed messages from a narc. I'm sure my father's jealous of me. He acts like I didn't even serve in the military when I'm around him. One day I realized that nothing would satisfy him. The reason is that the narcissists think they are the stand they are the standard for good and everyone must become them to be good. No one can ever measure up since no one can ever be them. That's part of it. I mean part of it is also that they hate themselves and is also to protect the fact that they're a piece of shit. So to scare people off from actually looking at who this person is in real life, what their behavior is in real life. That, that, that's, the, uh, that's the other end of it as well. My father even lies to me about his service now. When I was a kid, he used to say he was a rank E6. Recently, he tried to tell me his rank was the highest, mil highest rank in the military, E9. I laughed to myself. And you know what? Their lies do become more grandiose with age. The narcissists, as they get older, okay, and the stories they told when you were a kid or 20, 30 years ago, they get bolder and grander as the years carry on. Okay, and then if you call them at that point, then you're attacking an old man or an old woman, and you're saying, I'm crazy. And it's just a whole new platform for more fighting and more narcissistic supply, and it never ends. My father, my father claims all all other wars other than Vietnam weren't wars. I roll my eyes with disrespect. I told him in Afghan in Iraq and Afghanistan, at least fifteen Medal of Honor were given to troops. He didn't respond. You know that is typical narcissism, because if you consider what happened, what was said about the Vietnam soldiers that that wasn't a real war that they weren't fighting a real fight, that it was bullshit, they were babies, on and on and on and on and on. That was said for years about Vietnam veterans and the war in Vietnam. But he, and he must have heard that, there's no way he didn't hear it and know about it. But what the narcissist will then do is then take an attack and then apply it to you, even though that same attack was used against them, okay? He figured you weren't around, you don't remember, you don't know. Well, I'll just turn around now and use that same attack against you. And you know what? The media has basically kind of erased that, the treatment of Vietnam veterans from, from the vernacular. Because you don't hear about it anymore. Everybody loves veterans now. The veterans, the veterans, the veterans, the veterans. Okay? And it's funny because those Vietnam veterans had to fight hard for years, for about two decades, to get any recognition whatsoever for their service. And that was a real war, and how many of them were killed. So for him to then take that and use that same argument against, against the, the current wars that are, is absolutely deplorable, it's, it, it's awful. It's awful. And any real Vietnam veteran would probably punch him in the face for even saying that against somebody who would put on a uniform and put their life on the line to go to, go to God knows where country and fight God knows who. And then to denigrate that, that, that right there, what he did, is, is the pinnacle of who your father is and the lengths he will go through in order to protect his narcissistic abuse. Right there, cut all ties. Cut all ties. Like, you are disgusting and you are a hypocrite. But what narcissist isn't? I've lost a lot of respect for my father. I realize he's a covert narcissist. He's very passive aggressive. He said to me before I was into bodybuilding that I was skinny. When I put on 50 pounds of muscle, he said to me, you are a sack of bones, now you're a sack of shit. I'm surprised he just didn't accuse you of being on steroids because, or, or drugs, because that's what narcissists will always accuse you of. You know, if you, if you bulk up, you're on steroids. If you lose weight, you're taking drugs. Believe me, I've heard it a thousand times. You know, that's just part of the narcissistic playbook. 
no matter what you do, you can't win for losing. If you're too thin, you're too thin. If you're good, if you then bulk up, you're on drugs, and then they're going to find the way to attack you. This is why cutting them out of your life completely and never looking back is the only way to deal with it. I tried to please him in the past. Then I realized he doesn't love me. He has been he has been becoming even more aggressive as I limited my contact with him. When I call him just to say hi to say hi to him, he's getting irritable. I can tell. I don't want to be around him anymore since I know I have to be on guard the entire time waiting for the shoe to drop. Exactly. Who wants to deal with that tension and that stress? Because you know eventually that shoe is going to drop. I was adopted. My, bio, my biological father was in the Navy. He became an alcoholic and beat his wife. When I was one year old, my mother and father were fighting. My mother said to my father while pointing at me, you're going to lose him. And my father said, oh yeah, I'm going to make sure he will never forget me. My father then grabbed a butter knife and heated it over a hot stove and walked over to me and branded my right arm. I never wanted to be like him. That's a big part of the reason I never joined the Navy. My biological father died when he was around 40 from alcoholism. I don't drink alcohol either. In a sense, joining the Army was a part of developing my own identity. I was thankful to serve in the military. It just wasn't what I expected. The narcissist ruined it. The narcissist will ruin everything in your life. Even when you're making steps to better your life because of that, that abuse and those narcissistic seeds that were, point, that were planted in your head, it's eventually going to get ruined because you're always waiting for it to come crashing down. And that's the curse the narcissist puts on you. That's what grows out of those narcissistic seeds in your head. I had a chance to meet my biological father when I was around 14. I chose not to since he chose to leave a scar on my arm to remember him by. I don't regret it. I noticed narcissists love attention, love the attention they can get from family members being in the military. When I was in Kosovo, my grandmother was having her church group pray for me. When I lived in my mother's house with my grandmother, she treated me badly. Of course, it's the public accolades, the public sympathy. It's all of that. Charlene's brother was a marine and her and her parents you know shit talked it all the time to his face except when her mother's putting up 50 selfies of her in her car okay and over the over the seat you see marine mom u.s marine corps all that that they will do that they will take the public accolades for face to face they could give a shit and they will figure out a way to use your accomplishments against you my grandmother wanted me to help my brother-in-law put in a glass screen door. I told her I couldn't because I was studying for college. I was sitting in my room studying and I heard my grandmother say out loud to myself, stupid overgrown baby. I was furious with her insult, but I didn't say anything. I wasn't heartbroken when my grandmother died. <laughs> yeah, me either. She didn't love me. I just wonder some days how I could have a grandmother, a mother, and a father are all a narcissist. It's a curse. Um, no, it's not a curse. And, you know, watching these videos and watching these channels, you should figure out it's not a curse. It's what's designed. Narcissists make each other. They re they, they, Narcissists reproduce and make little narcissists like rabbits. That's what they do. And it doesn't necessarily have to be spawned from their narcissistic fucking semen and vaginas. Okay? Just being around with them. It, it, it's like catching from 28 days later the rage virus. You get around them, they spit their narcissistic venom on you, and the next thing you know, you turn into a friggin' rage induced narcissistic zombie. It's not a curse, it's a disease. It's a disease that they spread everywhere. It's basically turning, you, you can be turned into, you know, anybody who hasn't seen them, it's, like, it's very zombie-like, but they're not zombies. It was a military experiment with monkeys, an activist broke in, the monkey spit at them, boom, instantly turned you into a rage-induced monster, and it just spreads like that. 
That's what being around the narcissist is like. They spread their venom, and they, an army of narcissistic zombies come come running at you. You weren't cursed. That's just how the how the condition works. So, thank you again for your follow up. Thank you again for your uh, for your contributions to to the channel. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, everybody who's watched. Uh, please leave your comments in the comment section below. If you want a your story made, the PayPal link is in the description box below. You guys know what to do by now. Thanks, everybody, for watching. This is Ollie Matthews. I'll see you all again soon.